Well, we're almost done. We've had quite a journey through the endocrine system. We started out talking about the chemistry of hormones. We now know they are lipid or hydrophobic and peptide protein amine hydrophilic. And we know what that means in terms of how they get transported through the bloodstream and how they affect cells. We understand target cells. Then we started talking about how the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland controlled the adrenal cortex and the ovaries or testes and the thyroid gland, right? So we know all of that. Then we started talking about all of the uh, endocrine glands that are independent contractors. And we started by talking about pancreatic islets. And then we had to learn all about diabetes mellitus, right? So we're wrapping up with just two uh, different glands. Uh, we're gonna talk about the parathyroid glands. And we're gonna talk about the pineal gland, right? Let's talk about the parathyroid gland first. The parathyroid gland is also kind of like here, except for your thyroid gland is right here in the front. If I wanted to see the parathyroid gland, I'd have to rip this off, flip it, flip it around, and then it would look something like this image here on the right. And you can see the parathyroid glands are very small compared to the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland makes thyroid hormone. The parathyroid gland makes parathyroid hormone. Yeah, yay, okay. Now, it regulates calcium levels specifically Parathyroid glands, if your calcium levels are too low, there's going to be calcium levels. If your calcium levels are too low, oh no, they're too low, the addition of parathyroid hormone will make them go up into the normal range. Okay? Now, I want to say something about homeostasis. At the beginning of the class, I told you that that concept of homeostasis, those negative feedback loops, that even, not only is it an important physiology concept, but by mastering that way of thinking, you will minimize the amount of memorizing you need to do. And here is a good example. If you memorize that the parathyroid glands make parathyroid hormone, okay, you don't have to memorize that, but that parathyroid hormone will make calcium levels go up then if I ask you, well, what will cause parathyroid hormone to be released? You would just say, well, when calcium levels are too low, right? Once you master the idea of homeostasis, then some of these things just make sense, right? If insulin makes your blood sugar levels go down, then when is insulin released? When blood sugar is too high, okay? So the parathyroid glands. Now, one more little thing. What is the enemy, the enemy, the antithesis, the opposite of parathyroid hormone? Calcitonin. Calcitonin is made by the thyroid gland, and it will cause calcium levels to go down when they are too high. Okay? Let's talk about the pineal gland. The pineal gland makes two hormones, and they're very closely related to each other. It makes serotonin, and it makes melatonin. The pineal gland makes serotonin and releases it in the morning. And an exuberant release of serotonin first thing in the morning is one of the things that makes people, those kind of people that wake up happy and leap out of bed in the morning. If you're one of those people, I am so jealous because that is so not me. Um, and maybe it's my serotonin that's a problem. But the pineal gland, it's here in the back of your brain, and it is so small in humans that it wasn't even on those really nice brain models that you were working with, right? And it's like, come on, how hard is it just to throw in a pineal gland on those brain models? But they don't have it there. Now, in the morning, your pineal gland releases serotonin, and in the evening when the sun goes down, the pineal gland turns serotonin into melatonin and releases melatonin into the bloodstream. So here's another situation where this very small gland makes two very closely related hormones, closely related in structure. Now, they do opposite things. Serotonin wakes me up, makes me feel kind of happy, kind of content, like things are going to be okay. Melatonin makes me sleepy and also makes me feel like not doing anything like crawling in bed and just laying down. That's what melatonin makes me feel like. Now, you may wonder, 
how does my pineal gland know whether it's daytime or nighttime? And the way it knows is by light. Now you're thinking to yourself, the pineal gland's way down here in your brain. Do you mean the light shines through my brain? No, no, it does not. So your eyeballs have got in the back of it the retina, right? And the retina has got rods and cones, and they're attached to nerve cells. And most of those nerve cells are going to carry that information back here to the occipital lobe of the brain. I do not know why I'm spelling occipital for you. You know how to spell occipital, right? And we will process all of that as vision. But there are some rods and cones in your eyes that actually connect here to the pineal gland. So your eyes are not just telling your occipital lobe what it, what, that there's light around. Your eyes are also responsible for telling the pineal gland that there's light around. And the cells that are responsible for doing this to the pineal gland are particularly sensitive to blue wavelengths of light. They're mostly blue and green cones that are talking to the pineal gland. Yeah, that little factoid will come in in a second. Right? So the pineal gland, it produces serotonin during the day, converts it to melatonin at night, and then starts over again in the morning. And how it knows day from night is by the amount of light there is around. Now, we believe that the pineal gland is responsible for giving you jet lag if you get jet lag. Lucky you if you fly that much, I don't. Um, but it also is responsible for something called seasonal affective disorder. So out of all the humans on the planet, about 20% of us will get depressed every winter if we try to live in a, in a latitude that's very far north or very far south. So if you are someone who says, hey, I think I'll move to Alaska, or I'm going to move to Boston, or I'm going to move to Sweden, or Iceland or someplace nice like that, okay? There's about a 20% chance that you will get depressed every winter. And we do know that this is related to the pineal gland. Um, with seasonal affective disorder, it's caused by too much melatonin during the daytimes. So it'll make you sleepy. It'll make you irritable. It'll make you depressed. It'll make you feel like there's no point in doing anything. And it also gives you a craving for carbohydrates, which all of this is pretty much me every Christmas, but maybe I'm one of those people, okay? We know it's related to the pineal gland, not just because we can test for the hormone levels, but it responds to phototherapy. So people who get seasonal affective disorder, actually many people who move to those normal, northern climates, they just have bright LED light panel that they sit at their workbench or at their breakfast table, and they shine a really bright light at their faces for a certain number of, I think it's just minutes every day, in order to stimulate their pineal gland to make more serotonin, and it fixes the problem. Now, I told you that the pineal gland uh, was being told that there's light around, particularly by cones that can see blue light. And that has everything to do with these. Or if I had a tablet, I would show you. Um, you probably know, if you don't, let me be the first to tell you that uh, your phones and your tablets, they have got a way that you can set them so that automatically at a certain time every evening, the amount of blue light that's being displayed by your tablet uh, goes way down. So it lowers the amount of blue light. And it also lowers the light intensity overall. So there's a setting, I think mine's set to do that at eight o'clock every evening, that the light that's on whatever uh, computer I'm working on becomes less blue and, has, and is dimmer all by itself. And why are we doing that? Why are they even set up to do that? It's because of your pineal gland. When we take away the blue light and we decrease the light intensity, we tell the pineal gland that the sun is going down so your pineal gland can start 
making melatonin out of serotonin. And so when you fall, when you go to bed later that night, you can fall asleep. If you or anyone in your family has got a habit of using their phone or their tablets um, right until the moment that they go to bed and then have trouble falling asleep, so they pick up their phone or their tablet and then they can't fall asleep at all, then one of the problems can be this serotonin melatonin issue. And, and if you can't convince them to simply step this down an hour before they go to bed, at least have their phone or tablet automatically set for nighttime mode, which has less blue light and less light, All right? Okay, pineal gland, day, night. Yes, people who don't have eyes at all because they had to be removed for whatever reason, or people who are completely and utterly blind because there's damage to their retinas, uh, they can actually have trouble with this day-night cycle as well and depression related to it. That's it. I don't know what the next topic is. Oh, yes, I do. Neurophysiology. I'll see you at the next video.